All right. All right, uh, Ray. Good to see you, Ray. Can you hear me too? Good. Yeah, Michael. I think. Uh, did he go back out? Yeah, try to go out, Mike, and come back in. That should help. All right. That looks good. All right, guys. Lots to talk about tonight. I'll wait for a few more people, but uh, actually, I'm going to start here pretty quickly. Um, we've got a boatload of stuff to talk about. All right, very good. So, hope everybody's well. Um, again, I put this in a little early, so let me just throw this back out there. Here we are, Market Watch Group. I think we all know that. And, of course, we all know this. Uh, educational purpose only. Okay. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the market. Uh, crazy market. We've had, obviously, everybody, I'm pretty sure everybody knows, we've had a lot of information this week, a lot of Fed talk, um, a lot of football talk. We'll talk about that later. Um, and here we are. Yeah, I mean, the chart's worth a thousand words, no doubt about it. Um, let me, where in the world? Hold on one second, guys. Where the heck is my pen? Ah, there we go. Where's my pencil? Let me get my pen first here. Oh, come on. Are you serious? Hold on, guys. I've lost my pen. <laughs> oh, my. It never ends. Where in the world has my pen gone? I don't know. It certainly has disappeared. Give me one second. If I can't find it, then we're just going to have to move on. Yeah, I don't know where it's at. <laughs> well, but I have a backup pen. There we go. Don't mess with my pen. Update available. I don't want an update. I just want my pen. Okay. All right. So, um, again, Spy had a big triple top here. And then the news came out yesterday. We pulled back uh, a bit. Miguel, good to see you, Miguel. And... Reversal day, big reversal day yesterday, and now today, bingo, gap up, new all-time high. Let's see, I think this is correct. Let me make sure this is still correct. The high was 572.88, all right? So that was the high, 572.88, 572.88. There you go. New all-time high. Now, doji bar, overbought. We have some things to consider from a technical point of view. Um, what in the world? Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, from a technical point of view, we're overbought. I mean, last time we were overbought, time before we were overbought, big pullbacks, time before we were overbought, we eventually had a pullback. So at a triple high, being overbought, technically, mm, you know, not the best place to be. We did have a breakout, but we now we have a doji bar. Not the best bar to have. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what tomorrow brings. A break above today's high would technically be very good. If we start to break down, not so good. We'll see. We got a ton of support down here. Uh, we have support here on moving averages. We'll see. Today was a big day. That was up uh, 500-ish, 522. Everything else was up across the board. 
Tech was strong. Um, so a good start. Will it go up every day forever? No, nah, probably not. And of course not. It's not going to go up every day forever. But this is a good, very good start to potentially a new leg in the market. All right. So as always, um, groups are a big deal. Groups are always a very big deal. Oop, hold on one second. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at the groups. Oh, fantasy football, sorry. Um, so groups, interesting. Interesting stuff with these groups. Um, what do we see? Utilities, consumer defensive, and healthcare. And for some reason, real estate likes to hang around with that group. Defensive groups, definitely at the bottom. What do we have at the top? Technology, consumer cyclical, basic materials, industrials, financials, things that are going to go up if the economy stays strong. Things that are tied to the economy. No doubt about it. What do we see for one week? Same thing. Bottom. Now, of course, the one day is dragging down the one week, but still, there's your defensive stuff. And again, here's your offensive stuff. All right? Stuff that's going to move, stay strong, be very tied to a strong economy. No doubt about it. Now, when you go back a little bit, no, that's not what I want. I'm sorry, I'm getting used to my new pen here. When you go back a little bit to one month, um, you see a little bit different story. You see utilities here, defensive, cyclical, offensive, offensive here, defensive here, healthcare, defensive here, technology, one of the strongest, offensive, all the way down, all the, way down the bottom. So a big mixture. The market... Going into recently was mixed, was uncertain, not sure about what it wanted to do. All right. Now we have some uh, definite direction. Could change. No doubt could change. But this is broad-based offensive sectors. And so... Um, We'll see how we continue. Let me just see. I'm curious. I have not looked at the futures, although it's way too early now. Uh, yeah, futures down $6. Ooh. Uh, that's scary. No, actually, it's not at all. Um, but um, we'll see. It's, I mean, it's way too early. Tomorrow morning, we'll see. Um, we'll see how the market opens. We'll see how the market closes tomorrow. Very important. How will the market react going into the weekend? is always uh, kind of an important thing to, to take a look at. Um, so let's see. I mean, this market has gone up a lot. This is a big move. Um, one thing that you can take a look at technically are called projections. How much has the market gone up? The last two, usually three times it's gone up. So let's just take a look. Let's go over to trading view and take a quick look here at the um, that here, the percentages. So here's the market, and if we take a look here. This was the last move up. And it's not really here or here. It moved up from this little flag right here, a little bull flag. So from the bottom to the top. Roughly four and a half percent. And then this was another move, the next move from the bottom to the top, nine and a half percent. And so we can say, and then even this one, if we say we're still in this projection, five and a half percent. So four and a half, five and a half, nine percent, nine and a half percent, average probably about six and a half percent. Where are we now? Five and a half percent. Now, 
Does it have to go up according to this? No, but this is just a little technical thing that you can do. Look at the last three moves, see how far it's moved on a percent basis and kind of take an average or just say it could go from four and a half to nine and a half percent. If it goes to nine and a half percent, that would be up to all the way up to here, almost 600. But if it goes up four or five and a half percent, it's about where it is right now. So that's a little thought. Projections can be interesting. You know, and if you look back, I mean, how many times has the market really, there's another run up from here to here, seven and a half percent, five and a half percent, four and a half percent, nine and a half percent. So again, does it have to follow that? No, but can that be interesting? Can that be a, a roundabout kind of idea of where this market can go based on previous moves? Yeah, it's interesting. It's got some probability, All right? But since October of last year, I mean, that's a big, big move. What is that? Forty percent. Yeah, forty percent. That's a big move on the SPY. So, uh, well, uh, we'll see where it goes. You know, I remember when the Dow crossed a thousand. Yeah, I'm showing my age, but uh, still, I was, back then, I mean, that was back in the late '70s. And man, back then, twenty bucks was a big move. Twenty dollars was headlines. Man, the Dow was up twenty dollars today. <laughs> now, I mean, my gosh, now five, six, seven hundred points is is not you know nobody even kind of it's, probably, it's pretty much a yawner. All right, but that's how things change. All right, so um, Finviz. All right. Any thoughts, guys? Any ideas? Any questions? The Q's? Not an all-time high. Lagging a little bit, which is interesting from a technical point of view or from the view on tech. Pretty, no, pretty far away. You can get there pretty quickly, but that's interesting. Um, the Dow? Absolutely goes up to a all-time historic new high. Uh, so down the spy, yes. And the IWM, the Russell, close to here, but unfortunately that's not the all-time high. So all-time high is back over here. And that's pretty far away. 243. Get a high here of 228. Eh, here's a fairly big bar today. Average to range, probably about $6. You can get there when it wants. Hold on one second. Let me shut this phone off so I don't get bothered by these people putting in their text. Hold on, I'm sorry. It's football night. All right, so we'll see. So you have two indexes, Dow and SPY, breaking out to all-time historic new highs, breaking above resistance, and the IWM, and which has been weak for a long time. And the Dow, I mean, um, uh, the Qs, not quite there yet. So we'll see. Uh, Wilbur, good to see you. Glad you're here. Any questions, let me know. All right. So, um, we did have news. We had news today. And remember, mm, the Fed's still going to look at the news. That's not going to just shut its eyes because it's still kind of deciding. I know it says it wants to do a couple more, at least one before the end of the year. But, mm, you know, things can change. I hope they don't. Uh, I'm just, just factually. Um, so, we had right here. Where did it go? Unemployment claims, a little uh, lower than what was thought. That's good for the economy. Philly Fed and manufacturing index shows a part one look at the how strong the economy is, way stronger than what was forecast. Existing home sales were a little bit lower, 
than what was forecast. I think everybody can agree that probably, no guarantee, but that probably will start to ramp up. Now the interest rates are dropping. Mortgage rates will drop. There's no doubt it's going to help home sales. So we'll see. Uh, tomorrow, I don't think we have anything. Let's take a look. Uh, no. Nope. Unless we live in Canada. So, no. All right. I don't see any Fed people speaking here either. Next week. We'll see some people talking next week. Um, all right. So, you know, I think overall it's a rosy picture. Uh, sometimes you hate to be too rosy, and I'm not trying to be super rosy, but the economy looks fairly strong. I think we have a very good chance of not having a recession, of having of, of having a soft landing. Um, I hope so. I hope the Fed got it right this time. Many times they leave those uh, interest rates too high for too long. And that causes a recession which nobody wants. But a nice soft landing where uh, inflation stays low, interest rates come back down, the economy stays strong. That would be a bluff from my point of view. That'd be a blessing for everyone. People stay working and they stay, they stay employed. They buy stuff. And the economy moves along. And hopefully everybody's happy. <laughs> so, um, what else? Volume was up today. I should put volume on my chart. Hold on a second. Let's go back to a daily chart here. Let's go back to the SPY. And let me throw volume on this chart. I don't think I have it here. No. Volume, volume, volume. There you go. So a nice uptick in volume today over the last several days. And a little bit higher than all these days until we go all the way back to the beginning of August. So there is that for everybody who loves volume. It's always a good thing. Get this out of here for right now. So let's talk stocks. Anybody have any stocks? I got stocks. Anybody have any stocks? Any stock ideas, thoughts, questions? Um, and let me just wrap up the market look for sure. Um, it looks like the market likes 0.50. There's been a lot of discussion about should it be a quarter, should it be a half? What does a half mean? What does a quarter mean? A lot of talk about all that stuff. And the bottom line is it looks certainly like the market likes it. Um, so let's hope. Let's hope what we're seeing will continue. There's always a chance of a pullback. Let's hope. Everybody continues. Um, all right. So let's take a look at some stocks. And then we'll do some scans. Uh, just started off with a few. Apple. Eh, everybody loves Apple. You know, I love to trade the chart. I don't have a thing Apple. Nothing. I don't own. My wife has an Apple phone, but I don't own anything Apple. I don't even have an Apple tree. Got nothing. So, um, KO. Yeah, KO's had a little pullback. We'll take a look at that in a minute, Clint. Um, but Apple, nice pop up here. Very, very nice. Has a um, little, no. Well, the bottom line is we have nice resistance right here. You can see it came down. Popped, popped, came down, tried to get through again, came lower, and now it's jumped through there. We still have room on the stochastic. It's broken through both its moving averages. It put in a higher low. 
and you can call this whole thing a just one big consolidation, choppy sideways consolidation, and boom, breaks out today. This was the old high, 225.48, and ah, on KO, yeah, it is a KO for, for sure to some degree. Um, we'll take a look at it in a second. Um, but yeah, big bar today. Next resistance area is the top here, which is uh, 232.92. So call it 233. And today's high was 229, almost 230. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. All right. How about KO? Yeah, this this is what happened to KO. And look at the resistance bar right here, the resistance area. Bang, bang, had a little um, consolidation, ran up, banged into it, banged into it again. The high on this day, 72.30. The high on this day, 72.40. This one, 72.35. This one, 72.38. I mean, there's no doubt. Even this one, the green one, which missed a little bit, 72.24. All five of these days are within, what, 15 cents of each other. There is major selling here for whatever reason. There are no doubt that there are major sellers here. And now the sellers have come through. We'll see. Maybe we get a reversal. But the bottom line is, with this pointing down, doesn't look good. Now, you do have support here. see where that is the lowest one was here at 7048 so maybe 70 holds 70 nice big round number 7060 today 7048 here and 7057 here so both of these lows um, are lower than today's low so we'll see 7030. Oh, your stop is 70.30. Okay. Yeah. I'm a big round number guy. So, you know, if I was going to put a stop on this, I would put it just a hair under 70. Sure, you risk a little bit more money. Um, but 70 is a round number. You know, it's back like the old used car thing where um, you'll never see a car in a used car lot for $10,000. It's always $99.95. We're just wired to focus on round numbers. So, even as support, certainly as resistance. Inverted flag. Um, this is a mess, really, from a flag point of view. I mean, you could call this a bear flag, uh, but that's a stretch. This whole thing. And if it breaks here, yeah, I mean, that's not going to be good for this. Um, you know, and maybe it's just because um, this is not the sector that's really probably going to take off here. You know, a strong economy isn't really what makes people drink more Coke. Um, so maybe that's why this is just the sector is kind of failing. But there's your line in the sand for sure. Yeah, 56. One of these days had 56. Well, this one was 48. Today's was uh, 60 on today. So, yeah. Yep. I don't blame you. A break of here would have been really, really nice. It started out nice. You had a nice little consolidation right here. And then, boom. So you could have called this a bear flag and then it kicked out to the top and it was like, hey, this looks good. It was oversold. Sitting on a moving average. They just couldn't get through that resistance area. At least not yet. Something to keep an eye on. You know, if, if it bounces around like this and then breaks through there, that could be very interesting. I don't We'll see what happens. It was a, a nice setup, though. It was a nice-looking setup. Yeah, consumer defensive. And again, they're the ones at the bottom of the list. 
Um, cause again, you know, what does a strong economy have to do with Coca-Cola beverage company? And who knows what else they have? I mean, they got more than whatever that stuff. I don't even drink that stuff. I haven't had a soda in 35 years. Um, and don't intend to ever have one again, but, and I never was big on it, but I just, it's not my thing. Um, 72. Yeah. What was this high? 72, 43. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. One that has not worked so far. Um, oh, NVIDIA. NVIDIA actually looks quite interesting. From a technical point of view, here's a Nice little bull flag right here. Come on. All right. Puts in a higher low. Oversold. Runs up. Puts in a nice flag. Has a little pullback in the stochastic. If we get a break above here, can be interesting from a technical point of view. This would be your next resistance area. And then, of course, we still have this and this. So this whole area is kind of resistance. But that's a ways away. I mean, this is um, 120, 121. And if you went all the way up to here, that's 141. <laughs> you know, 20 bucks would make you happy if you had an option position or a stock position. Um, and of course, technology again, definitely running. Technology top of the list today by a wide margin. Yeah, it's a big difference up 3% and then uh, down a, a third of a percent or flat. I mean, that's a big difference. Um, get rid of these scribbles. Anybody? Any other stocks, guys? We got some in here. Gold. Gold likes to be choppy. At least GDX does. But still, can play these runs. IBIT. All right. So, all right. Higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. You know, this is... Um, this is definitely a trend. Higher and higher. Broke out above this resistance area. Reversal bar yesterday. Popped back in a little bit today. But it's oversold. So uh, you're going to find a lot of stuff is oversold. Walmart. Consumer defensive. Again, the sector that's you know, not screaming. Plus it's overbought. Pull back, coming into its 20 sector, not not the one to jump up and down about. Um, oh, XLK, the tech sector. Breaking out today, of course. Not, uh, not screaming as much as I would have thought. Nice run up, big pull back, higher low. Still hasn't even broke this intermediate high, uh, but a nice gap up today. IBIT. Let's see what we got. All right. Oh, this is uh, Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin was up today. It was up to what, 63,000. So a little pop in Bitcoin. Bitcoin's been since March. It has been on a downtrend. March Bitcoin hit 74,000 and it has been as low as 50 since. Uh, and now today it hit 63. So uh, a good reason for this to pop up. But it is overbought and it's going to have a hard climb going higher because you got this. You got this right here. And then you got another one over here. Um, so, yeah. But 
Um, if Bitcoin goes through 72, so 65 first and then 72, 74 could start the next up leg. And I, my theory always has been, well, for a while, that Bitcoin's been looking for a catalyst. It's been looking for something to make it move. And that very well could be this Fed move, this decrease in interest rates because crypto likes lower um, interest rates too. Bob, good to see you. But we'll see. Uh, technically, not... Uh, Eh. No, no real pattern. It did break through both its moving averages. Of course, it was oversold as it was here and as it was here, even as it was here. Um, so thanks, Bob. So we'll see. But a nice gap for sure. Nice pop. Uh, oil stocks, nothing. I mean, just a ton of resistance on Exxon Mobil up here. Good support down here, but just sideways movement still. Market doesn't know what to do with uh, oil. JP Morgan. JP Morgan. Mm hmm. Higher lows, definitely an uptrend. There's no doubt about that. But this was a nice clean uptrend, man. That was nice, and now it's gotten choppy. Still an uptrend, but a choppy uptrend. A lot of support right here. This is, and we've talked about this before. This is a Doji reversal bar because it's at the bottom of a big run down, and it's at support. And if the next day broke up, of course, in, real, in uh, hindsight, it's very easy. But still, this is this is the setup. Um, at the bottom of a big run over, run down, especially oversold, even better at support. And if it breaks above the top of the doji entry, and this thing ran up like crazy. When you see them in between, not so much. Like you see one right here. It's not at a high. It's not at a low. But when you see one at an all-time high, like even right here, if we had one here, right here that would be a great place for a doji bar so if you had this little guy right here or if you had one like this that where the tails up here where the price went all the way up to here and then pushed all the way back down the sellers push it down and then if the next day it breaks below there then that would be nice but didn't have one this is a classic Um, I think you can scan for dojis on Finviz too. You can take a look. I think there's a doji. Yeah, let's take a look. Uh, Candle sticks. Doji. There you go. Let's find one. Uh, let's see if we can find one an uptrend. See if we can find. Now, for example, this thing right here. See, it ran up. It had a doji right there, right at resistance. That was a great setup based on a doji. There is your doji. I'm sure it was overbought. If we had a stochastic, it would have been overbought here. And then, of course, it gapped down. That might have been. No, earnings was over here. So, uh, of course, it gapped down. So, it would have been very hard to buy that. But that's the look. Um, let's just run through here and see if we can find a few of these. Whoa, yeah, that one doesn't matter. 
And that would have been nice. This one right here. Hello, B. Let me bring it up over here. But didn't break below it. There's where your sellers coming in. It is overbought. It is at a big uptrend. But we needed to break the low of the doji bar, which it did not do today. Once in a while, you can wait two days. But the next day is always the best. Let's see if we can find something else. There's a couple more on that list. All right, so if we go back to this one. Whoa. Get out of here. Now this one had one right here, and this is an extreme example. Man. Uh, what is this? N I S N. That really is an extreme example. So it ran up. That is a. It's not really a doji because the body's too big. But then it's who cares? This is what we're looking for. Price ran all the way up to sixteen dollars. Came all the way down here and closed whatever that is, thirteen dollars. And then the next day broke the low and continued to go lower. But that's phew, that is a huge tail. This is a doji. This bar right here, today's bar. The doji is when the body is very, very tight, and then you have a tail. Especially, this would be a doji to look at for a uh, reversal down, and this would be a doji looking for a reversal up. Tails at the bottom. Why? Buyers came in, pushed it up, up here. Sellers came in and pushed it down. Thoughts, questions, ideas, guys. Anything? Throw it in here. It's all good. All right. Um, let's take a look at another one. EXP. This one, same idea, not a doji, uh, but a consolidation right here, oversold, kind of high or low, or you can call it at support, basically. And then it breaks above, goes above both moving averages and then takes off. Uh, Miguel, I swing and day trade. I don't day trade quite as much as I have over the years because I teach more than I ever have, but I still do both. Uh, more swing than day. My, my roots are in day trading. Yeah, my love is more of day trading, but yeah, I still like, I like swing trading too. How about you, Miguel? What do you do? Used to day trade swing now. Yep. Any reason for the change? This is a mess. But that's a uh, another one. Uh, yeah, curious. Oversold. Hanging around the moving averages. High or low. Breaks above, continues higher. There's a little doji bar right there. Doji reversal, right? Screams down, oversold, breaks above, continues higher. Um... Mark, you do options only and long trades, long stocks. Okay. Well, you know, day trading really is the same in a sense. You're still using, well, it depends on how you trade it. But for me, it's still overbought, oversold. I use the 2, 5, 15 minute charts. I trade off the two, but I look for them to be uh, oversold on 2, 5, 15. 
and I use the same patterns. Pull back or a bull flag. And so the only thing different that I use on day trading, let me get rid of this mess, are, um, let me bring them up. Uh, let's see, let's go to Apple. So on a two minute chart, for all the minute charts, uh, floor traded pivots. They're all spread apart because we had a big day the day before, but there are seven floor trader pivots. Um, they should be available on everything. I know they're available on Thinkorswim too because I got a couple of students that got them. I have them on TradeStation. Uh, the problem is a lot of times when you put them on your chart, uh, they want to leave them on there. I had TradeStation write me a play, um, a little script where they fall off every day because floor trader pivots are only good for the day, that day. They change every day. So leaving them on for, you know, you look at a day chart and you got floor trader pivots or any chart back for weeks, it's not helpful. They're not any good once the day is over. So that's how I trade them. But yeah, looking for, uh, for me, hmm, I don't know if I saw one today. Hold on a second. See if I can find one. Oh, here is one. Hold on a second. Let's take a look. Um, this is what I look for. Well, no, that's not exactly. But I look for a pullback and have it sit right on a any one of the floor trader pivots oversold and then look for it to bounce higher. That one's not perfect. But you get the idea. Floor trader pivots. Very few people know about them. But I, I have always loved them. They've always worked very well for me. For support and resistance areas. You can see right here. Ran up. Bounced right into it. And then pulled back. We got what is this? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, listen. Life can get in the way. There's no doubt. Life can definitely get in the way. All right, guys. Um, nice to see everybody. Glad you're here. Scott's ready to take over. Um, let me get my stuff off of here and be well. And uh, I will see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Uh, big quick five, I'll just set up on my end and we'll just